thank you, Mr. Reedy. And thanks to the OLAF to invite Antifraud Office of Catalonia to this workshop. We are uh, the real case in some way, no? because we are a region that has been working in a, in a political uh, initiative uh, regarding to fight against corruption, against fraud, and all, all these things. Mm, I, I will begin directly uh, talking about the Catalonian anti-fraud strategy. As you say, it was approved by Catalan government. So it's, it's, a, it's a strategy from the regional executive, the Generalitat de Catalunya. The regional executive uh, was approved uh, the strategy in January of these years and it's planned for two years. So currently it has only been working eight months and during these eight months has been the, the lockdown. So, so it's, as you said, really too early to, to, give, to talk about the real impacts. Um, I should say too, that is uh, the, the, the focus of the, this strategy is mainly preventive. It's not, uh, it, it not put in place new investigative tools because I think we have enough investigative tools but uh, it works in a preventive aspects. The vision of the uh, strategy from the point of view of anti-fraud office is positive in a whole. We, we think it's a good uh, strategy, understanding that is a possibilistic strategy and waiting for the final real impacts of the works in more or less one year and a half. Uh, we were consulted uh, before the, go the government approved approve the strategy and we prepared a specific report about our vision, the vision of uh, Adventist Office uh, of how, uh, how should be uh, an strategy. In, in some way, was the, our, our proposal was most, most ambitious than the final strategy. The project, uh, the anti, uh, the strategy anti-corruption project of the Catalonia is structured in nine working areas. The nine working areas are, I think, the classical ones. Public, I read, public procurement, public budget management, civil servant institute, conflict of interest, uh, lobbying activities, whistleblower protection, integrity framework, tax system and institutional quality. For each of these nine uh, working areas are defined three, two or three specific measures and in total 25 specific measures, I, I, I insist uh, more of them preventive related with these, these issues. Some examples, the more transparency in the agenda of high rank officials, uh, develop a new model of public account, uh, some specific training measures for public employees, some specific measures related to integrity and ethics management in the ministries of the government. You should, you should think that more or less the, the, the Catalan government has uh, two th 2,000, no, 230 thousand public employees and a budget about 35,000 million of, of euros. So it's an uh, important, important volume of budget and people working. Now they are, the government is working in this plan and we received the first, the first evaluation one month ago. We respond the evaluation with uh, report and as I say it's really very early to, to, talk, to talk about impacts. The strategy doesn't include nothing about COVID because as was prepared in the end of 2019 and uh, approved in, in the early uh, 2020, the, the impact of, uh, of COVID was not on that time so important to, to be included in the strategy but some of the, of the measures could be related in some way to COVID. But uh, the anti-fraud the anti 
a strategy uh, in April of 2020, approved a specific recommendations report about COVID. Uh, when I heard the representative of Transparency International, some of the music sounds me because was very, in some ideas was, was very similar. Our document of recommendations is based, I think, in three main ideas. Uh, and, and I insist that the, the very, uh, we, we have read the, the, the documents of the transparency about COVID and the doc documents OCD about uh, COVID. Uh, so I think the general ideas are very similar. Our three main ideas is, uh, the first is very simple. COVID-19 increases risk of wrongdoings uh, by, because it's an extraordinary moment of extraordinary expenditure. So the risk is higher. An extraordinary situation requires extraordinary measures of control. So we should accept this to begin. The, the, the normal systems of control are not enough to, uh, to maintain a good control over the, the expenditure related to COVID. This is the, the fight idea, this, this idea of increasing the risk. The second idea, transparency and accountability is as always one of the best tools to fight against the corruption. And COVID need a special measures of transparency. For example, we recommended to all the institutions to have a specific portal uh, or only with information about the activity of the institution, the institution related to COVID. Okay? In, each website and a specific portal of information on. And the third idea is increasing the control activity in real time. Uh, the control exposed is very important, is absolutely necessary. But on times on COVID where people is demanding quick answers, the control should be too in real time. So this, this demands uh, better coordination between all the, the all the control bodies. This this is are the the ideas, and now we are waiting in few days an, a specific meeting in the Parliament of Catalonia about the how how these these recommendations are working. Finally, in addition to this, from the investigative perspective of the anti fault office, we have begun three specific investigations. Uh, related to the overuse or the bad use about uh, the emergency procedure in in the public procurement. This this emergency procedure we should be used only in a, in the correct. This is the first vision I think between uh, around the the the, the Catalan strategy on this in relation to the, the importance of European proposals. For example, for us, the whistleblowers directive is a very good opportunity to change things here in, in our region in, and in Spain in general. So the, 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 the European initiative is really important. But in the case of our strategy, as I say, it's early, to, to talk about impacts, but I think it could be interesting to talk, talk about how was the preparatory process that there are some interesting aspects. First of all, the importance of leadership. Never is easy for a government, for, a, uh, for the politicians in a government to talk about internal reforms related to strong political leadership, a real political leadership, with a strong commitment on this. I think in our case, it seems that it, is, uh, it, it exists. So it's, uh, it's important to, to, to point out uh, this political courage. Second aspect important in the, in the preparation process, an open airs position, uh, an open position to her to, a, to a lot of people. For example, uh, in our case, there was a participatory systems with 
for workshops uh, with civil society, etc. And these people receive a clear feedback of what proposals of the workshops were accepted and what were not accepted. This, this is not only the participatory, in the important, as the uh, clear feedback. There was uh, asked for experts' opinion too, academics especially, and speci specialized bodies as we are, we, we offer to an assessment of the dissertation. Uh, it's important too, as third idea, a double, a double perspective for the follow-up of the strategy. One was the official uh, follow-up system with high-level governance and monitoring system with senior officials, etc. And another with a, particip a participatory system with representation of the social so society. This double perspective, I, I think, helps to put in place a good intent. But I, 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 we are an independent agency and, and should put to, uh, should pointing out some aspects that in some way could be criticized. Uh, for us, the strategy uh, seems to be too prudent or careful in some points of us. Of us. We would prefer, as I said to before, a more ambitious, uh, ambitious measures in some aspects. And I think, the, and we think, uh, and it's important in this workshop, um, further involvement of local government. I think that the, the regional government could try to arrive to a kind of agreement with province and municipalities to do this strategy more strong in this field of local and of local government. This is very quickly my, my answer. <laughs>